Wellbore Fluids Management, Drilling Fluids Basic, Module 1, Introduction to Drilling Fluids. As the name implies, drilling fluids are liquids used in drilling operations. In addition to oil field operations, drilling fluids are also used in geothermal, water well, horizontal directional drilling, and some highway and building construction operations. The primary purposes for using a drilling fluids are similar in all of these operations, but the conditions experienced while drilling and the products used may be very different. This module will focus on the oil field application of drilling fluids, but a lot of this basic information also applies to all types of drilling fluids. First, a little oil field history. It is generally accepted that the first successful rotary drilling operation was the Spindletop Well in East Texas in 1900. That well used mud, that is dirt and water, as the drilling fluid. The term mud has persisted through the years and is a generic term for a drilling fluid no matter what the composition. The most serious drilling problem throughout the early 20th century was blowouts. Spindletop blew out and reportedly flowed at an estimated rate of 100,000 barrels of oil per day. Blowouts are dangerous and expensive and have always been a major concern for the drilling industry. So, the first mud additives were weighting materials to increase the density of the mud to control downhole pressures, thereby stopping blowouts. Originally, drillers just allowed drill cuttings to build up in the mud to increase its density. But by this method, the mud weight could only be increased to about 10.5 pounds per gallon, at which point the mud often became unpumpable. Louis Stroud was a paint additive salesman for National Lead Company covering Texas and Louisiana. His company sold high-density minerals. After observing the blowout problems in the drilling industry, he patented the use of various minerals as weighting agents for muds. The first mineral used as a weighting agent was iron oxide, but it fell out of favor because it was very abrasive and would cause mud pumps to fail prematurely. So the mineral of choice became barite, which is primarily barium sulfate. At about the same time in California, Harth patented the use of a blend of barite and the clay bentonite as a weight material and thickening agent. The Harth patent was eventually found to be in violation of the Stroud patent. The two companies, however, reached a compromise and merged together forming the first drilling fluid service company called Barroid Mud Sales Company. The new company established offices in California, Louisiana, Texas, and Oklahoma. Barroid was the dominant mud service company through World War II controlling up to 85% of the market for most of those years. In the 30s and 40s, Barroid and the oil companies began placing emphasis on product development and mud test procedures, increasing the engineering and science of drilling fluids technology. This has continued to the present day, with service companies taking the R&D lead over the past 10 to 15 years. The later part of the 20th century was an active time in mud R&D, leading to improved water-based muds, the development of oil-based mud technology, and the development of testing procedures to simulate actual downhole operations. In this century, development has continued on high-pressure, high-temperature operations, wellbore stabilizing muds, synthetic oil-based fluids, and environmental waste management consideration. From spindle top to deep water, Drilling fluid technology has developed dramatically. The overall basic drilling operation, however, remains essentially the same, but with better equipment and more complete understanding of the chemistry and engineering needed to successfully drill a well. We still, however, pump mud down the drill pipe. The pipe rotates, turning the bit, which cuts into the earth, and then the mud carries the cuttings to the surface, still the same after more than 100 years. In 2007, the world oil field chemical demand was over $15 billion. About 36% of that was for drilling fluids. The rest was for cement completion, stimulation, and production chemicals. It is estimated that the drilling fluids business grosses from $5 to $8 billion per year. This varies according to the rig count and the price of oil. There are three international mud service companies. M.I. Swaco, a Schlumber J. Smith company, Barroid, a Halliburton company, and Baker Hughes Drilling Fluids. In addition to these three major mud companies, there are many, many local mud companies that have as much or more market share than the international majors who are in their area. Drilling Fluid Functions 
This is a list of the primary functions of the drilling fluid. In general, the two most important functions are to control pressure and to carry cuttings out of the hole. The mud controls pressure by means of its density or mud weight, which is measured in pounds per gallon or specific gravity. By using the mud weight and the depth of the well, the actual pressure on the well bore at that depth can be calculated. This is the static bottom hole pressure with the mud pump turned off. When the pump is turned on and the mud is circulating, the total pressure on the well bore can also be calculated as shown here. The same equation is used to calculate the static pressure. Then the amount of pressure imparted by the pump, called the annular pressure drop, is added to calculate the ECD, or the equivalent circulating density. We control the mud pressure on the well bore, the hydrostatic pressure plus the ECD, to prevent blowouts like these, one which occurred in 2009 offshore Australia and this year, 2010, in the Gulf of Mexico. Of equal importance to controlling pressure is cuttings removal. Circulating the mud is necessary to move the cuttings away from the bit and up and out of the hole. The mud also has to suspend these solids and the weight material when circulation stops. This is a function of the viscosity of the mud, while controlling pressures is a function of the mud weight. Mud weight is also needed to support the wellbore to stop it from collapsing, wellbore stability. In addition, the chemistry of the mud, primarily whether it is oil or water based, is a prime importance for maintaining wellbore stability. For the last 20 to 30 years, the environmental concerns about mud use have come to the forefront. Drilling fluids must be non-hazardous, non-toxic, and biodegradable. The biggest problem, however, is waste management. This involves both drilled cuttings and excess mud volumes. Here is a list of mud products used in water-based fluids. We still use lots of bentonite and barite, as well as the chemicals seen here. The most common water-based mud in the world is a freshwater, chemically thinned bentonite system enhanced with polymers. This is a list of some of the materials used in oil-based muds. The chemistry of an oil-based mud is totally different from a water-based system, and they are normally much, much more expensive. Additives for oil-based muds also must be tested for toxicity prior to their use in a drilling fluid. At the present time, we use about 60% water-based systems and about 40% oil-based systems. These percentages are dependent on where the drilling activity is, either on land or on the sea or in high pressure, high temperature zones. If the drilling activity shifts to more offshore work, for example, especially deep water, then the shift is to more oil-based systems and to less use of water-based systems. In summary, the purpose and function of a drilling fluid is to help complete the drilling operations quicker with no wellbore or mud problems. In petroleum operations, drilling is an expense. This expense results in the delivery of a well bore that can produce oil and gas. That expense is closely watched during the drilling operation. In addition, the mud must help in providing good information about the well bore in the form of logs, cores, and cuttings, which are then used for geological examination to determine the presence of oil and gas. Ultimately, however, the drilling operation must supply a cost-effective well bore that minimizes completion problems in formation damage and maximizes oil and gas production to provide the optimum return on investment for the operator. That concludes Drilling Fluids Basics Module 1, Introduction to Drilling Fluids. Other modules in this series include the Mud Engineer, API ISO Standards, Drilling Fluids Testing, Part 1 and Part 2, Drilling Fluids Reporting. Also available are the Drilling Rig module and a module on an introduction to upstream petroleum operations. For more information, you can email to info at drillcompfluids.com or visit the website at www.drillcompfluids.com. Thank you.